The Wall Street rally continues as the Dow Jones notches a fresh closing high while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq continue their longest weekly winning streak since 2017. Treasury yields fall, sentiment remains upbeat on hopes of the Fed cutting rates soon. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific trade largely higher, the gift nifty is indicating a higher start for the Indian market. Crude prices ease, Brent falls back below $80 a barrel as investors continue to monitor developments in the Red Sea. Gold, meanwhile, hits a three-week high on hopes of impending rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. India is ready for takeoff, says the CEO of National Stock Exchange, Ashish Chauhan, adds foreign investors are returning. Domestic demand also remains strong, with Uttar Pradesh beating Gujarat in terms of registered stock market investors. He's also hopeful of the NSC IPO being launched in 2024. SBI chief Dinesh Khara promises to support CapEx plans of private companies in the new year. JSW Steel CEO says CapEx likely to cross 1 lakh crore rupees, while NTPC chief says CapEx will go up by 30 to 40 percent and green vertical IPO likely in next one to two years. Good morning in the Mumbai News Centre. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast. It's a Thursday morning. It is also the monthly options expiry, the last one for the year. So let's get going and start first up with what the global markets are doing. Asian markets are largely higher, barring the Nikkei. And this is after a positive handover again that we are seeing from Wall Street. The Hang Seng is up 1% and it continues its up move. Yesterday as well, it closed high by around 1%. Taiwanese index absolutely flat, but there is some positive bias there. And that's the story across the Asian markets the Straits Times, which is high by 1%. We have Kospi, which is high by 7 tenths of a percent. So across the board, there's green on the Asian screen, barring, as I said, Nikkei, which is in the red, cuts of around 5 tenths of a percent being seen there. If you look at the gift nifty, uh, that is the one which is implying that the open again will be in the green, uh, 76 points higher there, 21,758. That's the mark right now that the gift nifty is implying as we speak. And in the US markets now, Wall Street ended higher with the S&P 500 ending up at 0.1%, rising closer to record levels. The Nasdaq Composite added nearly 0.2% in the session, while Dow Jones finished 0.3% higher. The three major indices are on track to notch their ninth straight winning week. Traders will monitor economic data on jobless claims and pending home sales tomorrow. CNBC's Christina Patsy nevelos gets us a wrap of all the action on Wall Street. Markets closed higher Wednesday as all three major indices reached new 52-week highs. The Dow gained 111 points, the S&P was up 7, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq added 25 points. Apple will be allowed to sell its newest Apple Watches after an import ban was temporarily paused by an appeals court on Wednesday. The company had stopped selling its Series 9 and Ultra 2 watches just last week in response to an International Trade Commission order that found the blood oxygen sensor in the devices infringed on intellectual property from Massimo. Apple filed an appeal on Tuesday and is seeking a longer stay. The ITC must reply by early January. The New York Times filed a lawsuit today against, a, against Microsoft and OpenAI, the company behind the popular chatbot, ChatGPT. The suit claims the company's created a business model based on mass copyright infringement, and it accuses them of abusing the paper's intellectual property to train their large language models. Microsoft invests in OpenAI and has incorporated ChatGPT into its Bing search engine. That's what's happening here in the United States. Back to you in Mumbai. Okay, all right, let's stay with the U.S. markets then and listen to Jeremy Siegel, professor at the University of Pennsylvania. He's discussing the U.S. markets and equities in 2024. I think the setup for next year is very good. I, I you know, I, I said January 1st and it was a, a, we last January 1st, right before different than consensus that we were going to have 10 to 15 percent. I didn't even expect it to go beyond that. Um, but I think that we could definitely get another 10, 12 percent in 2024. Um, uh, earnings estimates, you know, usually they're too high going out. I think 240 for the S&P might be too low. The S&P is, yes, 19 and a half times earnings, but value stocks are 14 and 15 times earnings right now. And if we're going to get that soft landing, which looks increasingly likely, that's a real buy in the market, in my opinion.
All right, that's the global market action. The setup is looking good, but how will these overnight cues impact our own markets? We have a research team joining in with what the trade setup looks like, the stocks that are likely to be in the news, and the action from the FNO space as well. Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, well, Sudarshan, let me come across to you. Looks like another good day. Morning, Sona. So, unlike our market, it was kind of a dull day for U.S. market as volumes remained very low ahead of year end. But despite that, the U.S. market closed with minor gains and on a weekly basis, it's likely to extend the gaining streak to ninth straight week. All the major U.S. indices closed with gains in the range of 0.1 to 0.3 percent and uh, after hitting their fresh 52-week highs. But for our market, it was another day of record high led by IT and banking names. The last hour surge helped Nifty go past 21,600 and Sensex above 72,000 for the first time. Nifty Bank 2 saw a record close led by HDFC Bank, which contributed nearly 50% to its gain. But for mid-cap index, it's still 400 points away from their record high. The interesting part on Wednesday was the up move seen in market was along with a big rise seen in volatility index. India VIX hit its record, sorry, hit its highest level since March and surged nearly 6%. Uh, and despite a big move, big move in equities, FIs were big buyers on Wednesday. FIs bought shares worth nearly rupees 3,000 crore, while sell figure for DIs were nearly rupees 200 crore. And today is the expiry of December series, and Gift Nifty is indicating a start at record high. But for commodities, it was uh, it was an opposite move to equities. Both Brent and NYMEX slipped nearly 2% each overnight, as reports suggest all these shipping companies are resuming their uh, shipping via Red Sea. Now, for today's stocks to watch, we'll be watching the stocks which can be part of the indices rejig, where inflows and outflows can be seen. Uh, for inflows, stocks are Bajaj Finance and HDFC Bank, and where outflows can be seen are Adani Enterprises, LNT, and Adani Ports. Okay, all right. Thank you, Sudarshan, for all those cues. But a lot of other stocks that will be on our radar as well. Hormaz is joining us now. Hey, Hormaz, good morning. Good morning, Sonal. And plenty of commentary coming in from the SBI Banking and Economics Conclave yesterday. And I'll start off with JSW Steel, where the CEO told CNBC TV18 that the expansion plans that they are undertaking, the capex for the same, is likely to cross 1 lakh crore rupees. And similarly, NTPC as well, that's, uh, their CMD told CNBC TV18 that it is aiming for the IPO of its green vertical in the next one to two years. You'll keep that stock on our radar as well. Canra Bank, where its board has given an in-principle approval for the IPO of its subsidiary, which is the Canra Robeco AMC, the asset management arm. The Sula Vineyards, well, people have been pouring in the wines this holiday season, where the December 24th and 25th revenue surpassed their previous single-day revenue record, which was in August. And the three-day revenue collection between December 23rd and 25th stood at 2.28 crore rupees. South Indian Bank, where the board has approved raising not more than 1,750 crore rupees via a rights issue that Zomato will be on our radar today as it has received a show cause notice from the DGGST in Pune over alleged tax liabilities worth 401 crore rupees and the tax liabilities are for the period of October 2019 to March of 2022 but the company has of course said that they are not liable to pay any of these taxes. Mahindra and Mahindra they would be divesting 0.58% stake in the first cry parent which is Brainbee Solutions as part of its IPO process and Brainbee has uh, filed its IPO papers with SEBI today. Uh, Confidence Petroleum, where its subsidiary has received a letter of award from BPCL worth 67 crore rupees, and the order is for the supply of CNG mobile and stationary cascades. And lastly, KPI Green, where the board is going to meet on the 30th of December to consider a bonus issue of shares. Back to you. Okay, all right. So a lot of these stocks on our radar. Thank you so much for that, Hormaz. But a lot of action from the FNO space as well. Mangalam is joining us now. Hey, Mangalam. Well, what a record bull run that we're seeing on our markets itself. Uh, you know, it is a record rally that we saw yesterday midday. There was some profit taking and the markets continue to surge. The Nifty Bank has been leading this with a 1.2% gain yesterday. The Nifty too hitting a double century in trade. What happens today? It's a Thursday. It's also the expiry, the monthly expiry for both Nifty as well as Nifty Bank contracts. And in December series so far, the Nifty is up 7.5%. The best move that we've seen so far in December in recent times is 7.7% in December 2020. With the kind of up move that the gift Nifty is indicating, it may perhaps well be the best December that we have in recent memory itself. 
The FIS, they're putting in the money. Close around 2,900 crores is what we saw in the cash markets. Likely inflows today as well on account of indices being rejigged. But they're taking some money off index futures and that's understandable as well. Nearly 500 crore worth selling out there. The FI longs, which were close to around 66% a couple of days ago, are now 62 and a half odd percent. Some shorts entering the system is always good for the markets itself. 21,600 call has been extremely active. So that means that on the way up, 21,750 may perhaps be a bit of a resistance. But the way the momentum is in the markets, you know, upside levels are being taken out very smoothly. At the lower level, we will see some sort of support coming in at 21,500, which has become an important mark of support with regards to open interest build up too. For the Nifty Bank, 49,000 call has the maximum open interest. Whereas on the way up, 48,500 call is extremely active. And on the way down, 48,200 put, telling you that 48,200 would be an important support to watch out for. Just two signs of overheating. One, the India VIX continues to move higher. Now it's above levels of 15. And secondly, we have the Nifty put call ratio, which is at 1.42. That also indicates signs of a little bit of overheating in the market itself. Who's to say that may not, they, you know, the up move may sustain even today? So watch out for a bunch of stocks, Balram, Purchidi, Delta Corp, Hindustan Copper, all of them exit FNO ban on the expiry date. Okay, all right. Thank you for that, Mangalam. So uh, that is the power prep segment and the treat setup for the day. We'll slip into a break. Up next, we'll get you all the excerpts from our conversations held with the SBI chairman, Dinesh Kumar Khara, the NEC MD and CEO, and many more from Corporate Inc. Stay tuned for that conversation. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Well, uh, let's get some corporate conversations now. India is preparing for a takeoff. That's the word coming in from Ashish Chauhan of the National Stock Exchange speaking at the SBI Bank in Conclave. The NEC MD and CEO said Indian stock market has been insulated from happening across the world and has continued to receive foreign participation. Our services and remittances have now Drawn. gone much more Correct. than our imports of oil uh, electronics and gold, which were like three things we could not have stopped. Mm. And once you start going up on the export chain, uh, there is nothing stopping you. That's how I see this. Uh, finally, we are reaching a place where uh, we are actually preparing for a takeoff. One significant inflection point that you expect or anticipate to see uh, in 2024. The market is waiting for that. NSC IPO, are we likely to see that in 2024? <laughs> I think, I don't know whether you have invited my regulator, but uh, I wish. <laughs> okay, let's get you some more highlights from the SBI Conclave. India Inc. is bolstering its plans for capital expansion. The CEOs of GSW Steel and NTPC promised higher capex in the coming months. SBI Chief Dinesh Khara said the bank is ready to support the capital needs of the private sector. Private corporates, they had a lot of cash sitting in their balance sheet. First and foremost, the investment happened by deploying that cash. Mm. And now they have come to a stage where they have understood the growth opportunity which is there. And we are very much there to support their such initiative so that the private capex should now take off. This is what our first priority is. Our capex has been in the range of around uh, 25,000 yeah. crore, which kind of thing. Going forward, it is going to increase. And it is going to increase at least by 30, 40 percent. By 2030, we will be adding on the renewable side 60 gigawatt. So today we are having 3.5 gigawatt, which is commissioned. Uh, seven and a half gigawatt is under construction. So it's almost every month something capacity mm. is getting commissioned. I think uh, down the line in next one to two years, as we add up the capacity and uh, further there is a gro pipeline of growth and uh, uh, further utilizing not only as the energy, but I think the, once the storage starts becoming the reality, means this becoming the affordable uh, storage solutions. Uh, this green energy uh, will be having much more scope and maybe I think down the line about, let us say, about decade or two decades, I think this may be even overtaking many other companies uh, itself. And uh, we would be definitely looking forward and that's, a, uh, that's our thinking process, which is nothing to any secret in that, that maybe I think down the line about a year or two then we will be going to be listing this arm um, anyway.
We plan to take our capacities up to about 50 million tons before the end of this decade. Uh, we see a strong momentum, maybe not 15%, but a 10% double digit, 8 to 10% growth is something which is easily possible. And this would call for a capex, uh, additional capex in excess of 100,000 crores. Okay, these, this is an exclusive conversation. We'll keep getting excerpts through the course of the day, but let's move on from there. Hotels in Ayodhya are fully booked as tourists, devotees book accommodation to visit the soon-to-be inaugurated Ram Mandir. Radisson and Taj properties are among 73 new hotels coming up in the city as the hospitality industry expects immense growth from high demand. Madhya Mujawar with more details is joining us now. Ayodhya's economy is set to see a dramatic boost after the 22nd of January. As Uttar Pradesh gears up to open the doors of Ram Mandir for the public, businesses are hoping to open new streams of income with a massive flow of devotees expected to visit the city. Officials in Ayodhya Development Authority tell us they are expecting 7,000 guests for the inauguration ceremony and 3 to 5 lakh visitors every day for at least a month after the inauguration. Such a massive inflow of tourists will need accommodation. And that has led to a sharp boom in Ayodhya's hospitality sector, particularly hotels and homestays. And here's why I say that. Almost all hotels in Ayodhya are fully booked for the 22nd of January. And the huge demand has also given them the pricing power. For example, hotel rates that I checked on the 19th of December show rooms per night selling from 17,000 rupees per night to as high as 73,000 rupees per night. Let's look at the Ayodhya tent city, which has 30 luxurious air-conditioned tents. This is fully booked for 22nd of January, with per tent sold at 30,000 rupees. And the staff at the tent city told me they expect 100% occupancy for a few weeks after the inauguration. The immense demand potential has attracted big hotel chains to open shops in Ayodhya. Authorities tell us, apart from the existing list of hotels, there are 73 new hotels in the pipeline, of which 40 are already under construction. Radisson is the first international brand to open its hotel in Ayodhya. It has built an 80-room property and will open bookings from the 1st of January. Radisson plans to sell each room for 30,000 rupees per night. We don't see these rates even in the metros. Indian Hotels that operates Taj Hotels chain is building two hotels in Ayodhya, having 100 and 120 rooms each. Both hotels are expected to start business in three years. And it's not just the big players. Even the local residents of Ayodhya have an opportunity to earn. Officials tell us they have sanctioned 500 homes with 2,500 rooms for homestays. Homestays is where tourists stay in the same house as the owners. Such homes are registered on UP Tourism's Holy Ayodhya app. With big hotels making a beeline, Ayodhya's property rates have also risen like never before. With the city becoming a tourist magnet, Uttar Pradesh could also become a job creator, giving a new identity to the state. Okay, an interesting report, uh, Madiha. Thank you so much for joining us uh, with those details. With that, we'll get into another break. Up next, we'll get you all the cues from the commodities market, so stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. Let's get you the latest in the concerns around the Red Sea. German shipping company and one of the world's largest hapagloid, uh, largest ones, Hapagloid said it will not resume its use of the Suez Canal despite an international coalition to keep the route safe. This comes after Danish shipping giant Maersk said it will resume operations in the Red Sea and a day after a container ship belonging to the Mediterranean shipping company was attacked in the region. Hapagloid said it will review its decision on Friday. The company in a statement said it considers the passage to be still too dangerous and will continue to reroute its ships via the Cape of Good Hope. Shares of all European shipping companies, including Maersk and Hapigloid, were under pressure in Wednesday's trading session. Okay, that is all about the shipping concerns that we are seeing globally, but a lot is happening in the commodity markets as well. Manisha Gupta is joining us with all the update. Hey, Manisha, good morning. 
Morning, Sonalal. Pick, pick it up from the shipping part itself. And while Maersk has said yes, the MSCGM, which is a French company, also has resumed passage through Red Sea. So that actually has brought the crude oil prices down by nearly 2% in the overnight markets. Also, while uh, the U.S. crude inventories are showing a rise of 2 million barrels was the second reason for the pressure. But the markets also are looking at the oil loading at Russia Black Sea port, which is suspended due to storm that could support. And also, U.S. has finalized contracts to purchase 3 million barrels oil to replenish its CPR are a couple of supportive factors as well. But for the metals as a sector, the year to 2023 seems to be closing on a positive note. Gold prices are up by 15%. Copper also is set for a mild gain in 2023. Now markets are looking at increasing demand for EVs, green energy, and that could support buying. Also expectations of a U.S. rate cut in March 2024 supports. The street is also looking at the dollar index, which has now fallen below 101 at a five-month close, also seen as a supportive factor. Okay, all right. So that's uh, everything from the commodity markets. Thank you so much, Manisha, for joining us as always. Moving on to some more news now. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar met with Russian President Vladimir Putin at the Kremlin on Wednesday and held talks on a whole range of issues, including the war in Ukraine. During discussions, the Russian President also extended an invitation to Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit Russia next year. Earlier, uh, S.J. Shankar, who is on a five-day state visit, met with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, and reiterated that New Delhi's relationship with Moscow has been strong and steady and called Russia a valued and time-tested friend. Okay, it's time to talk about some news uh, and updates uh, back home. The Indian Med Department has issued a dense fog advisory for Delhi, Haryana, Punjab and Uttar Pradesh. This has led to a delay or even cancellations of several flights and trains. In fact, at least 110 flights were diverted yesterday on account of the poor visibility. Delhi also saw its longest winter fog episode yesterday. The IMD predicts that the dense fog could last through the weekend. In fact, sources tell CNBC TV 18 that 12 out of the 16 diversions in Delhi were due to captains not being trained enough to land in 50 meter visibility conditions. Okay, all right, uh, we'll do one thing. We'll take your leave on this edition of Power Breakfast today, but do stay tuned. All the market action comes up on Bazaar Morning Call.